The road to Arch Madness continues here on CBS Sports Network. We bring you to Southern Illinois, a team in second place in the Missouri Valley, taking on the Bradley Braves. And as we look at the standings in the Valley, nine and four for the Salukis. Bradley keeping pace at eight and five. And we welcome you courtside, everybody. Alex Sobario alongside Kelly Burke. And Kelly, game with huge tournament implications and one that last year Bradley came into this building and catapulted themselves all the way to the NCAA tournament. Bradley at the time 0-5 in the league and went on a huge run all the way through Arch Madness to win it as a number five seed into the NCAA tournament. SIU the biggest shocker of this season, picked 10th in the league, and they're currently in second. As we look at the, the players that are going to be involved in this particular game, let's talk about Daryl Brown. He's been sensational his entire career for the Braves, and it's been no different here this season. Our Daryl Brown, just a steadying force for this Bradley team. 15 points, four plus assists per game, a great distributor. He can shoot the three ball, he can attack off the dribble, and does a phenomenal job getting to the free throw line. As we take a look at Southern Illinois, it's been a freshman for them, Marcus Damask. He's been sensational inside, outside, it doesn't matter where, he's been tremendous. Ford freshman, Marcus Damask. Incredible maturity he's shown as a first year player. Not afraid to take the big shot. 14 plus points, five plus rebounds per game, leads all Valley freshman. And he's a three level scorer, can hit the three, he can attack off the dribble, and will post you up. Huge game with arch madness implications. It's coming your way next. The Salukis and the Braves on CBS Sports Network. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By KitKat. Have a break. Have a KitKat. And by AT&T. Well, before Walt Frazier was swishing and dishing for the New York Knicks, first player ever here at Southern Illinois to have his jersey retired. One of the Hall of Famers, number in the Raptors here at the Ventura Center. Glad to have you here in Carbondale. Bradley Braves taking on the Salukis of Southern Illinois. Here's a look at the starting lineups. And Kelly, I can't tell you how happy Brian Wardle is to have Elijah Child back in the lineup. Their, their team has been decimated by injuries this year. At one point, they had six scholarship players, so to have Child back in the production that he's been able to produce the last two games, 19 points, nine rebounds, is huge for this great squad. Let's take a look at Brian Wardle, the Marquette grad in his fifth season. Of course, led the Braves to the NCAA tournament last year, and we wanted to get him to chat about last season, and he wouldn't do it. He said, this season is about this season. We're not even thinking about the fact. He didn't even remember that they were 0-5 coming into this building and won. As for Brian Mullins, first season, a Hall of Famer here for Southern Illinois was part of two NCAA tournament teams. And, of course, he was a, a longtime assistant of Porter Mosier over at Loyola Chicago, so he knows the Valley pretty well. He knows it very well and was part of that four burn U team here at Southern that went to the Sweet 16. Tip control by Bradley, we're underway. Bradley in the red and the white. Salukis wearing white with maroon trim. This is Daryl Brown with it, immediately gets a shot off, and it's off the mark, and Salukis will have their first possession of the game. What do you expect to see the first couple of minutes here from both these teams? Well, I expect both of these teams to kind of feel each other out as far as the tempo goes. Bradley's going to want to push in this game, and Southern is going to go deep into their shot clock offensively. Salukis so had a seven-game win streak snap their last time out against Valpo. Just nothing was going in for them. They said they'll give a lot of credit to, to what the what Valparaiso was doing against them. There's a jumper for the baseline. It's off the mark. That was Barrett Benson, the graduate transfer from Northwestern. Now here in the corner, it's Canal. Bradley at 17 and 9 overall, but 8 and 5 in Missouri Valley play. Here's Cannell in the corner for three, and he buries one as he rattles it home. One of the best three-point shooters in the country, 11th in the NCAA in three-point percentage at 43%. And that was all set up. The double team coming on Childs, and he's able to pass out of it, find Cannell for the corner three. Now Salukis trying to get their first bucket as Benson on the drive, but we get a foul. And Benson's going to have to continue to do that in this game, put the ball on the floor, and really attack the bigs of Bradley. Oh, 
Fouls on Barr is first. And Saluki's got a fresh 20 here. Saluki's working into the post. They like to vary things up on offense. Coach Mullen said he, he wants them to run a little bit, but he isn't afraid to have them be in the half court set as Suggs misses from the outside. Kingsby. Here on the right side. We'll skip it over to the corner. Head fake again. Cannell launches again from three. This time it's off the mark, and we get a whistle and a loose ball foul. And it's going to be against Childs. That's the look, though, that Bradley wanted, and Childs continues to do a good job recognizing when the double team is coming and finding Cannell, who's so good from distance. A little over two minutes gone by here. Benson lines up for the triple. The big fella able to put one in from downtown. He's got a pretty good percentage from out there, nearly 33%. That's what makes Farrah Benson such a multifaceted player. You have to step out and guard him at that three-point line, but he can also blow by you off the dribble or post you up. Benson, a graduate transfer is Northwest, from Northwestern, as we mentioned, didn't get a ton of playing time, came over to Southern Illinois, has really been one of their key players. As we look on the other end, a put back there from Barr. Great job, Barr, being active on the glass, and that offensive rebound number going to be so important for this Bradley squad among the conference leaders in that category. There's got a drive, the mask, we talked about in the open, misses on the drive there. Bounce pass down low. Childs finds some room, goes for the reverse layup, and he misses. Southern dodging a bullet there, just forgot about Childs. Not sure how you forget about him. Here's Benson down low. Misses from close range. And Barr with the rebound. Now the Braves looking for another field goal here. Childs. Trying to find that touch again. He's had 19 the last two games, and then we get a foul here as Barr goes up with it. Kelly, let's take a look at the keys of the game. For SIU, the transition defense is going to be so important against this Bradley squad who loves to push and get the tempo going. And then for Bradley, points in the paint. That first meeting, 32 of the 67 Braves points came in the paint, and they really dominated that area in the second half. Bars free throw is good. We get a substitution here as Deshaun Henry in the sophomore from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, checks in for the Braves. Comes in for Childs. Bradley extends their lead two for two at the line there from Barr. And that's going to be an area to keep an eye on. The Southern team does not pick up a lot of fouls among the national leaders in that category. Ari Boya is in, coming in for Barr. For number one, the sophomore, the seven-footer from Cameroon. This is McGill with it for the Salukis. The mask. And work it down low in the Benson. Benson, before he can even put the ball on the floor, draws the reach-in foul from Boya. It's first foul on Boya. They're calling it tight in the post so far. They sure are, and Benson doing a nice job of recognizing that and putting the ball on the floor. It's already three team fouls against Bradley. So Luki's at 15 and 11. They weren't picked to finish high at all. We get a three-pointer from the wing, and it's good. Lance Jones hitting from downtown, the freshman from Evanston, Illinois. Among Missouri Valley Conference freshman, he's second in the conference in assists. Just incredible what he's been able to do. And Jones talking about a guy who had never played point guard before in high school. Three-pointer from the wing is off the mark there from Kingsby. Now the Salukis have a chance to take the lead on this possession. The mask from way outside misses. Fight for the rebound. Offensive board Suggs out to Jones. Launches the three, buries it. 
Lance Jones again from downtown. And Jones feeling it. Suzuki's playing inside out right now and a great pass from Benson. It's a 9-7 lead for the homestanding Salukis. Currently on a 10-game home court win streak. Bradley leads the all-time series. It goes way back, this one does, as Cannell answers back with a triple of his own. And if there's one guy on this Bradley team you do not want to leave wide open from distance, it's Nate Cannell, among the top three-point shooters in the conference. Here on the drive, that's McGill had it deflected and it's taken away by Bradley. And here's where Bradley can really push in transition. Cannell taking it in, stopping at the block and hands it off to Daryl Brown. Brown on the take, off the window, off the mark. Benson, the Salukis are running. Leave it back for Jones, thought about it, didn't take it, now to the corner. This is Suggs, too strong on that one. And the rebound to Henry. Come back to the point, Brad Bradley leads the all-time series 50 to 47. This rivalry goes back all the way to 1927. Keep in mind though, Bradley, the last seven meetings here in Carbondale, just one and six. That one win coming last year when they got on that roll. Turnaround jumper, Kingsby. Leg extended, rattles one home. And the Braves leave it 12 to 9. Damask backing it in. And there's a block right there. It's Boya able to get his hands on it. Long lead pass ahead. Henry underneath. And that forces a timeout. So Lukey's want to talk it over. 14 to 9, Braves with the lead over the Salukis here in the early going. Bradley out to a five point lead here in the early going. 7 nothing run for the Braves. What's working for them right now, Kelly? Well, they're doing a great job crashing the offensive boards and getting the ball paint touches for Elijah Childs. And when the double team comes on Childs, he's able to find the open man, which so far has been Nate Cannell. Two three pointers already in this game. So for the Salukis, Mullins wanted to take a timeout. What do you think he said to them in the huddle? He said, keep playing hard like you're doing. Keep trying to get the ball, break it down off the dribble, get paint touches, and that'll open things up for the rest of the offense. It's McGill right now with it left side for the Salukis. Again, Salukis in the white. Bradley in the red. Here's McGill, top of the key with a hand in his face. No. And Cannell with a rebound. SIU has to find a way to get Eric McGill going in this game when he is hitting in double figures, they are a completely different ball club. This is Brown. Bounces it into the post, and we got a whistle and an offensive foul this time against Barr. And a great job, Benson. Just playing the position, not giving up any ground, able to draw the offensive foul. Barr with that little extension right as he was putting the ball on the floor. They, you can't do that. So Elijah Childs will come back in the game. And Coach Warder was telling us about Childs. That he's just now starting to get his win back. It's only been two games, but it was his hand that was, was injured for all that stretch. So he was able to do some conditioning, but that's no... Uh, that's no way to kind of be in basketball shape being on the treadmills. We had a three-pointer on this end again from Cannell. 10-0 run now for Bradley. Cannell's third three-pointer of this game. That's one of the transition opportunities that SAU has got to figure out a way to stop that trail three. So now a 17-9 lead for Bradley in this Southern Illinois crowd has kind of been taken out of it a bit. The dog pound a bit silent on the baseline. Here's Jones, way outside, launches, misses. Childs with a rebound. It was one of those heat checks raised by Lance Jones. 
pull up from 15. It's good, and Brown continues to pour it on here for Bradley. It's a 19-9 lead. A double high screen you see from SIU. Jones dishes it off to Brown. Now back to Jones. Corner three this time. Bounces around the rim and finally drops it. Harwin Francois, the sophomore from Fort Myers, Florida, able to put one in and stop the bleeding a bit. Childs dishes off underneath to Henry, misses with a foul. Bradley, 19 to 12 with the lead. Free throws coming up when we come back. Well, since we got to 2020, things have been going well for Southern Illinois, and because of Damask, the score tied at 66, 1.6 to go versus Missouri State. Marcus Damask unties it. Huge celebration, carries over to the locker room, the seventh consecutive win for Southern Illinois. The mask, 14 and a half points on the season, and we talked about him in the open, Kelly, just what a tremendous player he is, not only on the outside shooting, the inside, but he's got such a feel for the game as a freshman. Which is incredible, just the composure and poise he's able to show, not afraid of the moment, as we saw on that turnaround shot. Missouri State, three players draped all over him and able to convert. Damask, though, so far being held scoreless in this game. At the line for Bradley, 22, Deshaun. As Deshaun Henry will go to the free throw line here for the Braves. Henry, a player for the Braves this year that has really stepped up, doubled his production, and has been key with that Elijah Childs injury. Saw a lot of added minutes because of it, and he capitalized on that opportunity. Now 20 to 12, Braves with the lead, make it 21 to 12. Checking in for the Braves, number one, Ari Boya. And with 10.41 to play, here in this first half, Braves gotta be pretty pleased with the way they've been playing right now. Absolutely, they're doing a great job, plus five right now on the boards, they're getting to the free throw line, and. Nate Cannell has been able to knock down some huge three-pointers. Francois. Ahead to Jones. Ten on the shot clock now. Jones trying to find some room. Active hands there from Kingsby. Now to that right side. Here's Brown going baseline, running out of room, stepped out of bounds. That's just good defense. Yeah, great defense for Bradley. Forcing him into the baseline. And Nowhere to go. Take another look here, different angle. Look at that. They always say defensively, don't give up the baseline, and he's not giving up any ground. Trent Brown has to go out of bounds as a result. Darrell Brown with it now. Bradley looks to extend their lead after their hot start. This is Childs. And just his third game back after missing 12 of 13 and another beautiful drive there from Kingsby for the left hand. It's now a 16 to 3 run for the Braves. Kingsby doing a nice job getting involved offensively. Now four points in this ball game. Coach Brian Mullins starting to look a lot like their last time out against Valpo where just things were not going their way. That happened more in the second half. This is a tough start. Childs playing defense there on Davis and forces him to take a poor angle shot there. And Alex, I've been so impressed so far with the defense of Bradley, much improved from last season. And we talked to Coach Wardle about that, and he said we just we do a nice job keeping teams out of the paint and contesting shots. Brown into the mask, and that was swatted from behind by Childs, and we get a foul in the backcourt as the Braves are trying to push it up the floor. It's going to be against Damask. And the fans here at the Ventura Center didn't like it. It's a third team foul against the Salukis. Let's take another look. And you see they're just tripping over Damask. Another drive to the bucket, off the mark, and then we get a Boya saying, looks like he gets called for the foul for a push to the back on the tip, and it looked like he had scored 
And he shakes his head, saying, kind of disagreeing with our officials. We see there Boya coming in. Last minute over the back. That's the right call. Boya picks up his second foul. Mask. A little give and go with Davis right now. Well, the help defense on Damask has been so good so far from Bradley. Brown has it here in the corner. Loses the defender, goes up with it, tried to get it off the window, draws the foul, and they say it was on a pass and not on a shot. Foul on 25, Nate Cannell. That's Cannell's first personal That's the foul on Cannell. It's already 16 fouls against the Braves. Brown is at the line. Brown shooting two. So the other official corrected. One official said it was on the pass, but no, Brown was going up, so he will shoot. Brown one of three freshmen on this SIU team that has really made a huge impact this year. Vance Jones and Marcus Damask. Brown, the Miguel first player to commit for head coach Brian Mullins in his first year. Kind of a new look team, a team, again, we talked about it, expected to finish last. near the last, near the bottom of the Missouri Valley, and yet here they are in a tie for second place. And they're doing it with 10 newcomers. Really the only returnee that saw significant time, Eric McGill, number four. Skip it over to Kingsby here to the Braves. And now they're 23-14 lead. This is Childs. Henry, spin move in the lane, throws it up, can't get it to fall. And the Salukis have the rebound. Corner from Gooch. Kingsby with the board. Right now, Bradley just really forcing SIU into taking a lot of three-point shots. They'll float one up, trying for that alley-oop. Got a little tip it on the other side, Jashad Henry. Great vision by Kingsby setting Henry up all alone under the basket on that tip in. Kingsby was named the newcomer of the week after the game against their game against Missouri State. 10 points in the win against Indiana State back earlier this week. Missing short there. Here come the Braves. To Vine and out. Now over to Kingsby. Misses with a three, air ball. And it, it, it's gonna be the Salukis ball when we come back. Southern Illinois needs to get back on track. They need to stop plays like this. Bradley up. Tonight at midnight, get caught up on all of your college hoops from around the country on Inside College Basketball right here on CBS Sports Network. Take one more look here at the Missouri Valley Conference standings, and you can see how tight things are up at the top. And it all comes down to positioning here. Loyola Chicago and Southern Illinois both at 9 and 4, but Bradley can push themselves right into that second place seeding if things break their way. Absolutely, and it's all about seeding at this point. Three weekends left until Arch Madness. So much parity in this league right now and this Bradley squad trying to get themselves now that they're healthier healthy as they have been this season back the momentum that they captured last year get on another run here going into March uh, Saluki's so kind of having a, a season that was a bit of a surprise we've talked about a, a number of times at this particular point they find themselves at nine and four how do they continue what they're doing with such a young really young roster they just have to stay in the moment they can't really at this point look at the big picture and that's something that coach Mullins talked about is that we haven't set goals we haven't set limits on wins or what we're going to do in arch madness we're just trying to get better every day at practice and i think some of that naivety with the young players they have is actually working to their advantage 25 16 advantage for the braves right now three point miss there from henry and here come the Salukis on the break. I'll slow it up. Get it to McGill, and he'll drive it in. Stop. Trying to find some room. A little scoop shot. Can't get it to go. 
Suzuki's have to figure out a way to get to mask and McGill going. They averaged and combined 25 points for this offense. Brown had some trouble with the pass there from Kingsby. He's able to regather, now pulls up from inside the circle and buries it. And does such a nice job recognizing the mismatch off that screen. Daryl Brown now passes Walt Lemon Jr. on the Bradley scoring list, now sits seven on the all-time Brave scoring list with 1,722 points. And you can bet the message in that timeout to Eric McGill and company attack the basket. That's the second time we've seen McGill really go into the paint among the trees trying to draw the foul. Free throw miss there from McGill. Now Antonio Thomas, the freshman from Memphis, Tennessee, will check in. Kingsbury. Yeah, I'm sorry, missed them both, and McGill, you know, he was so critical that seven-game win streak that SIU went on, his production offensively was the spark plug behind this SIU run. Brown, nice dish underneath, finding Barr. And Brown continues to curl so well off that screen, the help defense of Benson comes over, and that's leaving the Bradley Biggs all alone on the roll. Lead is 13, it's the largest of the game for the Braves. Dump it down low into Benson. So Luki still don't have a field goal that isn't a three. Not anymore is Benson able to put one in there. Benson going to the baby hook right at Koch Bar. Lead still in double figures though for the Braves as Barr tries one from the elbow. The mask still without a point. Run, love to run to mask off that high ball screen. Benson gets a man on the air for Suggs, who goes baseline. Now retreats back to the mask. 11 on the shot clock now. Benson in the post. Comes the double. Another jump hook, and it's good. They need to, they need to go to that more often. We absolutely need to go to that more often. Benson has got it himself going. So skilled with that hook shot, doing it from the baseline that time. During the seven-game win streak, Benson had a couple of double-doubles. And then a bad pass there, and Barr kind of upset at himself. A little miscommunication there. And now you can feel the Saluki fans starting to get into it a little bit, and Brian Wardle trying to calm things down on his team over on the sidelines. And leave it to the grad transfer Barrett Benson to get this team going offensively. His head coach, Brian Mullins, says, he is one of the best leaders I've ever been around, and he's such a vocal presence for us, both on the offensive and defensive end on the court. Benson was part of that Northwestern team that made its first ever NCAA tournament a couple of years ago. So we're going to drive in, and Suggs takes it to the hoop. And what we've seen in about the last four to five minutes is Evan Hughes starting to attack the rim. And it's making all the difference. And Bradley takes a timeout as Southern Illinois is pulled to within seven. ago that Brian Mullins was playing on this floor for the Salukis. And then now the head coach in his first year, Southern Illinois, the second youngest head coach in the entire country, just turned 33 years old, two-time defensive player of the year in the conference, and part of some really historic squads here for the Salukis. He's part of that Sweet 16 squad in 2007. Let's not forget, too, he was the associate head coach at Loyola that team that went to the final four so he knows how to win and he's done it at different programs both as a player and a coach i talked to the sports information director here tom weber and he said of all the coaches he's seen come through this southern athletics any sport he said brian's attention to detail is unmatched yeah you can take a look at that based on his shoot around and his practices as well talking to him kind of before uh shoot around today 
was talking about he didn't really think that this was the pathway to get to get a position as the head coach as your first head coaching job at your alma mater. That doesn't happen in college basketball, but it's happened here at Southern Illinois because of the relationships he made along the way and really the type of coach he's become in such a quick period of time as another three-pointer in the corner. This time from Tabadinen, confident shooter is what they call him. Had three trays in 88 seconds in their game against Missouri State a couple of weeks back. And there's that rim protection we see that was really causing SIU issues early in this game. Double-digit lead here for Bradley. There, they had surrendered it back in the single digits. There's an offensive rebound, and that's what they've been missing for 12 or 13 games with a hand injury, Elijah Childs. And they, they, they don't just talk about his production from the scoring or production rebounding, but they say he's an energy guy. He's always what keeps them going energy-wise. He's so explosive inside, both on the offensive and defensive end, and he's such a multifaceted player. They're just a different team when Elijah Childs is on the court because he's so active. Watch him calling for the ball. Manning it almost. Now over to the corner. Tabadainen buries another corner three, and he's fired up. And that forces a timeout over at the Southern Illinois sideline. 37-22, under three minutes to go in the half. 8-0 run. The following is a list of snow day closings due to inclement weather. All two-wheel drive crossovers should close for the day. Wannabe SUVs should close for the day. Regular four-door sedans should close for the foreseeable future. All cheap 4x4 vehicles will remain open despite the harsh weather conditions. Now purchase and get $2,000 bonus cash or well-qualified lessees can lease the 2019 Jeep Wrangler for $281 a month. AT&T at the half, Brent Stover, Ryan Gomes, and John Rothstein are standing by in our New York studio. They'll take you throughout the busy day of college hoops that we have in store for you today. That's all coming up here on AT&T at the half. Let's go back here right before the timeout. You can see Bradley starting to make things happen, and Tabadainen hitting a couple of trays during this last stretch. And that was all set up for Tabadainen by the fact that Elijah Childs is commanding so much attention, he can face you up, and he goes off the dribble and able to find the open man on the wing for three. Tabadainen, the freshman from Helsinki, Finland, they really like his confidence shooting the basketball. And he should, he shoots it at 37% from the field. And when you got a freshman shooting it at 35% or higher from downtown, you got to feel good about his future. They just, the Bradley has so many options from distance. You look at Nate Cannell, who's their go-to three-point shooter. Daryl Brown can spot up. Tava Nainen, excuse me. They have so many options. Corner three this time for the Salukis. Off the mark that time, Kings with the rebound. He's been active in this first half. Dump it down low into Henry, draws the contact, and he'll go to the line. Foul John Carrington gave us his first personal foul, fourth team foul in the So Southern Illinois has had their spurts here, Kelly, but they have not been able to sustain it to get it closer. No, and, and you can see that the, the, the defense, especially the post-defense of Rally, is really tightened up, had given some ground. SIU had really been attacking the rim. And back to rim protecting. Bradley's ball movement has been phenomenal so far in this first half. They continue to play inside out. Henry, one more free throw for him. Off the mark that time, Chaz with a rebound, the put back, puts it in, tucked the basket of the foul. That's the type of activeness and difference Elijah Childs makes in this lineup. Just absolutely relentless on the offensive boards. Watch him fighting through the box out, goes up high to get it, gets the turnaround, embraces the contact, and an opportunity for the hoop and the harm. You saw a little bit about uh, of that fire that Childs brings to the table. That last foul on Benson, which is his second. We approach the two-minute mark here in the first half. Bradley with a comfortable lead right now. Francois for three, no. 
shooting continues to be a struggle right now for the Salukis. Oh, Bounce pass, beautiful yeah. feed. Kingsby, though, can't finish. Brown loses his defender to the rim. Off the window, no. Second effort, no. Francois for three. Just that momentary hesitation by Brown allowed the defense to recover in time. So Lukies have just seven field goals in this first half. They're seven of 23 from the field, shooting just 30% from the field. Throwing up, trying for the alley-oop, and then a little put back there from Childs on that second effort. And the lead is now 20. It's a 13-0 run for the Braves. It's so hard for SIU to stop that because Childs goes up and gets that basketball. He's a matchup nightmare. Well, after the Salukis had cut it to seven, Bradley now has rattled off 13 straight points. Three-pointer from the wing is off the mark there from Gooch. And this Bantera Center crowd has been relatively silent for what they're used to when they come to this building. Well, and keep in mind, this SIU squad, their largest margin of defeat was at the hands of this Bradley squad in that first meeting. Kingsby nearly lost the handle, able to get it back. Beautiful feed down low on the bounce pass. Is going up with it was Henry. He gets hacked, and he'll go to the line. And Henry doing a fantastic job on the backdoor cut. As the pass is right to him. Salukis have not scored in the last three minutes and 49 seconds. And they're just one of their last 12 from the field. Henry struggles there from the free throw line. Henry, a player for Bradley that has doubled his production this year and really took advantage when Childs was out with that injury. And Coach Wardle said he's just been more consistent his sophomore season, especially with his work ethic. Childs connects on the second free throw. And the lead is now 21. 28 and 5, 10 seconds to play. The Lukies probably just want to get in the locker room so they can draw it up on the whiteboard and figure out what's going to happen next in the second half. This is McGill outside. Brown in the corner for three, buries it, and that gets the crowd going. Two seconds to go. Bradley will try to get a shot off. They do. It's going to be way short. And that's going to do it for the first half. It's the largest halftime deficit of the season for Southern Illinois as Bradley ends the half on a 14-3-1. Just a dominant performance for the Braves in the first half. Absolutely. This Bradley squad so good defensively, shutting down Marcus Damask and Eric McGill and really has forced SIU into being dependent from the three-point line, and they're not hitting. That's the end of the first half. 43-25 after the break. We'll send you to Brent Stover, Ryan Gomes, and John Rusty in New York. You're watching CBS Sports Network. Network. CBS Sports presents AT&T at the half. At the half between Bradley and Southern Illinois, the Braves end the half on a 14-3 run. Brent Stover, Ryan Gomes, our insider, John Roth. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is yes, all Bradley. Ryan, what are you seeing in the opening 20? Bradley's defense has been smothering, making it hard for Southern Illinois to score. They watched that game. They played them last and won by 19. And also, versus Valpo, they only scored 38 points. As we see here, they're sliding their feet, not using their hands, making guys turn it over. we got a turnover right there. we got a contested long NBA range three. Off. Bradley gets the rebound. Here we go. Slide him, slide him, slides and forces him out of bounds. Bradley's playing extremely well. And then here on the out of bounds play, everyone's aware and paying attention. Get another still and pushes in transition to see if they got an easy basket. Southern Illinois just 8 for 28 from the field. To your point, tremendous defense. It's 43 25 Bradley on the road. A look at the Missouri Valley Conference standings. Northern Iowa leads the way here up two games over Southern Illinois and Loyola Chicago. Who poses the biggest threat to the Panthers when the conference tournament comes around in St. Louis in early? 18 Final Four trips. Nine National Players of the Year. 
legendary coaches and players. An iconic postseason tournament. The Valley runs deep. Welcome back to AT&T at the half. Just when you think you find out the answer, somebody else changes the question. Southern Illinois is hot in the Valley. Not today. Bradley by 18 as we inch closer to the off. Second half thought on our game. It's an 18-point lead right now for Bradley. Well, if you are Southern Illinois, you have to find a way to manufacture easy baskets and also get better defensively. Down 18 at home, not a recipe you want to have when you're getting ready to get momentum going for Arch Madness. Definitely, if you're not scoring the ball well, you need to defend well, and that's what's happened to them the last game, full game, and it's halftime. So hopefully they can pick it up on their home court. Bradley closed the half in a 14-3 run. See if that momentum continues second half. They lead by 18. Second half with Alex Del Barrio and Kelly Burt comes your way next. Enjoy. Thank you for watching AT&T at the half. Just an offensive explosion for the Bradley Braves. They lead it over Southern Illinois, 43 to 25, as we get ready to start the second half. And we welcome you back courtside, Alex Obario alongside Missouri Valley insider Kelly Burke. Kelly, it's just a tremendous explosion offensively for Bradley. They've been efficient, whether it's outside or inside, not so much for Southern Illinois. Well, Southern Illinois was so shocking. Your Southern Illinois, known as a defensive stalwart in this league, number one in the league in defense points allowed number nine nationally but it's Bradley's defense that has really been keying the Braves in this matchup able to absolutely shut down the Salukis on the offensive end and then Bradley doing a great job playing inside out a lot of that Elijah Childs and Deshaun Henry able to break things down and find the three point shooters of this Bradley squad and Nate Cannell he's one of the big reasons why they were able to explode offensively he's got three threes Cannell doing a great job Childs Passing out of the double team, then Henry, same thing. He's been able to knock down shots, a phenomenal three-pointer. Then they are able to find him in transition. And Nate Cannell is absolute money from distance. Take a look at the halftime numbers. You can see the field goal percentage there, but you pointed out something else. Yeah, you see the, the 16 points to six in the paint right now. And that number, when you really look behind it, the fact that they've been able to find Cannell on some kickout threes, that's all because of the paint touches. So Bradley needs to continue to exploit that area. They have a huge matchup advantage in the paint. Nate Cannell again with those nine points, but there's so many players that are contributing right now for Bradley. Cannell with nine to lead the way, but Henry's got eight. Childs and Barr both have six. And see if Southern Illinois can find a response, and they'll attack the basket there and draw a foul. That might be what they need to get going, trying to get to the foul line early. Going to have to be the magic recipe for Southern. Really struggling from the outside. Eight of 28, their worst shooting performance of the season in that first half. So you have to get higher percentage looks, like we just saw, attacking the basket, Lance Jones. Jones, another one of these newcomers for the Salukis. Just over seven points per game. For Southern, you look at the disparity, you think it's got to come on offense. What they also need to get is they need to get some defensive stops. Their defense can feed that offense of SIU and get them going. And get the crowd into this game. Cannell had to come out of the game after picking up his third foul, so that could be something to watch. He just highlighted him being a leading scorer in the first half there for Bradley. They've been finding offense just about everywhere. And hedging on that pick, Benson picking up the foul in the process. And he picks up his third. And Vera Benson, we saw him be active offensively early, but really shut down the last 10 minutes of that half. Keep in mind, Marcus DeMath, right now, and Eric McGill combined zero points in this game. Top of Nyden's pass deflected and taken away. Turnovers have been low for both teams for the first half of play. Just four for Southern Illinois, just two for Bradley in that first half. Taking it to the bucket there was Jones. So he's getting busy offensively early for the Salukis. Hit a couple threes in that first half, now attacking off the dribble. 
was the freshman Lance Dump Jones. They tried to bounce it into Childs and take it away again. Saluki's again forcing turnovers. Jones to the rim, kick it out to the corner, Suggs. Just good ball movement here in the early going for the Salukis. Jensen working hard inside to get open against Koch Barr. And now Brown called for the person. You see Brian Wardle trying to calm his troops down. Wardle's fifth season now with the Braves. Overall record as a head coach, 170 and 149. Spent all that time with Green Bay before coming to Bradley. As McGill gets another bucket, Southern Illinois on a 9-0 run going back to the end of the first half. And a timeout taken by the Braves. And Brian Wardle wants to talk it over. Buff. the Salukis, they've cut the deficit down to 12. Bradley Braves still on top here in Missouri Valley Conference. Action time now for the player profile brought to you by State Farm. And it is Daryl Brown. Third in the Missouri Valley Conference in scoring since conference play began at 16 and a half per game. Of course, the godson of Penny Hardaway, the Memphis head coach, and he's just really, he's gonna go down as one of the all-time great Bradley Brave players of all time. This does so many things well, and he's such a calming presence on this Bradley roster, especially with all the adversity they faced this year with injuries, and he faced his own adversity, a con thigh contusion, and he's had to be extremely tough to work his way back, and still making a big impact. Brown's parents, made the trip today from Memphis to take this game in. Big game for the Braves, and you know, we talked about it briefly in the open, Kelly, about how important winning on this floor was for them last year to kind of catapult them the rest of the season. They can really kind of do the same, especially now that they have Childs back and everyone seems to be as healthy as they are going to be. There's just a different feeling right now about this Bradley squad with Childs back in the lineup and everything that he not only brings on the offensive end, but the defensive end. Let's keep in mind, Brian Wardle told us from Bradley that this is the most hostile environment Bradley will see up until Arch Madness with this huge crowd here in Carbondale. And SIU, a 10-game home court winning streak right now on the line. Here's McGill. Jones drives it in. He's been busy in the second half. Misses that time on the drive. And Barr with a rebound, and here come the Braves. Childs nearly got away with a walk and then to turn around little baby hook got that one to go and kind of silence the crowd there for a second That stops the bleeding a bit for the Braves That mid-range game for Childs has been such an area of improvement this season And Southern Illinois 10 game home win streak coming into this game and they hit one of the corner there That's Barrett Benson and a graduate transfer from Northwestern. Benson had a three early in this game, a couple hook shots, but had been quiet for about the last 15 minutes offensively. There's Childs again, beautiful hook, and he now he's starting to get fired up as he pounds his chest on his way back down the floor. Elijah Childs doing a little bit of everything in this game. Now up to double digit points, five plus rebounds, three assists. Lead back to 13. Working into the mask, who's been rather quiet. Now it's Benson, right corner this time for three, and he misses that time. Childs with a rebound. Childs has had 19 points in each of the last two games since we're coming back from injury. And he's got him in 12 out of 13 games. If you take a look, and what he was able to do last Sunday, game also on CBS Sports Network. It's 12 games after the surgery to repair his middle finger on his right hand, he finished with his 14th career double-double, 19 points, 11 boards. He's a tremendous player for them. He's really their energy guy, but he's also a guy that they depend on to not only score, but get rebounds for them. Yeah, great rim protector, crashes the offensive glass hard, and so explosive, especially establishing position inside. 
who was the tournament's most outstanding player last year. And they're going to look for more. It'll be Saluki Ball when we come back. As we look at that matchup and how important it is for both of these teams, VCU and Richmond. Of course, both those schools located in Richmond, Virginia. And right now, both projected to be in the first four out. So a win over each other is huge when it comes to at-large implications. And we're in that crucial time of year where every game matters down the stretch for seeding, for getting in the tournament, for building your tournament resume. And certainly that's something that both of these teams here this afternoon have been trying to do themselves. You know, and everyone kind of looks at what Northern Iowa was doing and they say, well, that, that they're going to be in the tournament no matter what, even if they fall early in the conference tournament. It's a matter of who else could make the dance out of this conference right now. Well, you, you draw inspiration from what Bradley did last year, becoming just the second five seed ever in Arch Madness history to make the tournament. They got hot at the right time and able to carry that into the NCAA tournament. Bradley certainly in this game playing the way they, they want to be playing as they get down the stretch. You know, just talking to Coach Wardle, who <laughs> you really would not talk about last year. He said, we don't we don't think about those things, but they have some veteran players, guys like Elijah Childs and Daryl Brown that remember last year and winning in this building and what it did for their season. And you, you, you absolutely are right. You do remember as a player when the momentum shifted last season and like, it gives you the confidence here coming in SIU with a 10 game home court win streak that you can do it again. Here's McGill coming off the screen, misses short and Childs with the rebound. And Bradley just continues to do a great job of limiting Eric McGill's touches. That was just his third shot attempt in this game. There's a takeaway. Benson ended up with the loose ball. The mask from long range buries it and he's been looking for that pretty much all afternoon. His first bucket of the game. And that just hasn't gotten a lot of opportunities to shoot the basketball. Up top, Kingsby. On the drive, Childs is rejected. Here come the Salukis. Benson working hard inside, a mismatch against Henry. High post Benson, spin move, throws it up, kicking it to go, but he's hacked and he's fouled, and he'll go to the line. So initially looking for the transition three opportunity. Back to Mask's first three-pointer and points of this game. And then coming back the other way, doing it with defense, the big-time stuff. A foul on Henry, by the way, as Benson connects. Would you look at that? It's down to nine. Made eight. It's the closest it's been since it was 29 to 22 in the first half. And what do you know? The Banterra Center is starting to awake. Lance Jones. Seventeen to four run for seven of the Lord. Beautiful spin to the rim. Jones making it look easy. And Lance Jones absolutely winning this matchup with Daryl Brown in this second half has been brilliant attacking off the dribble. And that one would have blown the roof off the place if Davis was able to connect the transfer from Nebraska. Now to the rim, it's Kingsby trying to quiet the crowd a bit, and there's a little tip in as Henry somehow was able to put that one in the bucket. And Henry continues to give this Bradley squad such good minutes, now into double figures in this game. It's 
Jones again, working on Brown. Jones, again to the rim, off the window, score the basket of the foul! A big boy bucket there from Jones! And the freshman absolutely feeling it right now. Freshman on senior, and he is not backing down. One bit. Jones attacking off the dribble, going right out, embracing the contact of Daryl Brown. And then how about the little spin move? That was like from the old Allen Iverson commercials back in the late 90s. Absolute textbook by Lance Jones. Miss on the free throw here, and we got a foul. Jones getting a little bit too amped up there, going after it defensively in the backcourt. This is where if you're Southern, you're back within six, you have to control your emotions. Jones is first. But we're now into single digits. Haven't been here in a while. 49-43, Bradley on top of the basketball. Top of that in. This is Kingsby, trying to split two defenders, dishes off, throwing it up there, Henry. And Henry able to get the put back to go. Here's Damask. Content isolating Damask, letting him go to work, posting up Henry. Damask taking it inside, trying to draw contact. Fans thought there was no whistle. And now a technical foul has been issued. It's going against Brian Mullins. Ryan Mullins give it a technical, he's fired up. Tomorrow night at 8.30 Eastern, our season-long coverage of PBR continues from Arlington, Texas. Don't miss the Windstar World Casino and Resort PBR Global Cup USA only on CBS Sports Network. A technical foul issued to Southern Illinois head coach Brian Mullins just before we hit the break there. And kind of fired up if a foul was not called on a kind of a post-up play from Marcus to Mass. But the Salukis have uh, been doing quite a bit to come back. But you can see, you can see the official right here, right next to Mullins. Yeah, and Brian getting uh, emotional about it and fighting for his ball club. Sometimes this might have the effect of firing your team up even more when you go to fight for them on a call like that. And it was actually the trail official that, that called it as he's coming back down the floor. Nate Cannell is back in the game and playing with three fouls. Here to shoot the technical. And after this kind of surge in the second half by Southern Illinois, a technical doesn't help you a ton, but it could energize your guys even more. Shows that your head coach has your back. No doubt. And, and Brian Mullins, he's, he's done such a nice job. This team as a whole, 10 newcomers, they've taken on the demeanor of their head coach, the way they really hang their hot hat, that blue-collar mentality on defense. It's Kingsby on a drive, trying to dish it off in the last second there for Barr. And Benson there to break it up. And his defense in the second half has been very good on the post players of Bradley. The lead's been as many as 21. SIU did have a 21-point comeback last year against Northern Iowa. It was back on January the 23rd. It's a school record for comeback. Been down as many as 21 in this game. Here's Benson, up and under, trying to find some room, can't get it to go. And Barr with a rebound, here come the Braves. They're looking for their 18th one of the year, their ninth in Missouri Valley play. Kingsby just trying to get rid of it. Having to save it, and they save it right into the hands of Jones to the rim, and he lays it in. Jones now 16 points, doing a little bit of everything for this SIU squad. And he has been the X factor for the Salukis in this second half. 
But, and Marcus Damask not being able to get things going offensively. They've had to look for other sources of it so far in this game. It's been Jones. Here's another takeaway to the rim. McGill scoring to the foul. Second foul on Kingsby. Miguel just jumping that pass. And just running into him, Kingsby with the body. Top and nine and trying to save that ball. And Jones, right place, right time for the finish. Eric Miguel at the line for the Zulu shooting one. Just like that, McGill can make it a five point game, and he does. Tara center starting to rock. Tom and Evan dishes it off to Childs. No. Bar goes up with it. We get a foul. And there's that offensive rebounding of Rally. We saw so much of it in the first half. Now eight offensive boards in this game. And 12 second chance points. An opportunity to convert a couple of free throws. That's four now on Benson. And for a guy that's been giving you quite a bit on both ends of the floor, that's a scary situation with 10 minutes to go. Jeremy, Jeremy, Benson. the junior from Serbia, checks in to relieve Benson. Second free throw good there from Ball. Jeremy, a guy that doesn't see a lot of minutes, less than five minutes per game but necessitated by the foul trouble for Benson we get an offensive foul against Jones the second of the game second of the half and just a little bit of a nudge there Whistle came a bit late, and I think that's why you got such a visceral response from the bench and from the crowd. Well, I, I think if you're Jones, you've been doing that all night, being physical on the drive, so you're not quite sure what's the difference on that last call. Dump into the post of Childs. The mask on him. Childs. Into the lane, kicking it back to Ball. Canal. Round the screen, find some room. The pull up from 17 with one of the shot clock, can't get it to go. Rebound comes out to Mask. Miguel into the lane, out to Jones. Buries it. corner from Jones. And McGill Drake with all kinds of red jersey kicks it out to Lance Jones, the freshman knocking down the corner three. And Jones just continues to impress. Leading Jones, all, sorry. Leading all scores with 17. Childs. The Kingsby. Childs again baseline. No. 8-1 run for Southern Illinois. Over the last two minutes or so, they can tie it with a three. Damask. Eleven to one run for the Salukis. Marcus Damask, quiet in that first half and heating up at just the right time for SIU.
This is our first tie of the game since it was three to three. The mask couldn't get that one. Bradley looking for the tourniquet, trying to stop the bleeding here. Down to the post of Childs, underneath. And they get one right underneath the bar. And Childs has been so good passing out of that double team, looking for his fellow big guy, Koch Barr. It's now a season high for assists for Childs. Brown going baseline, has the room this time. Damask left open for three, buries it. And the Salukis have their first lead since it was nine to seven with 15-14 in the first half. Childs underneath, score to the foul. And you have to be aware, aware of where Elijah Childs is at all times. The defense conversion on Daryl Brown. What a comeback in the second half. Marcus Damascus, no points in the first half. Damask gave him the lead. Get ready for Arch Madness, the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament presented by State Farm. And this one feels like arch madness in this building, the way it's gone back and forth. It was a 21-point lead at one point for Bradley. Salukis came all the way back, took the lead. Braves just responded and now have a one-point lead, 58-57. Alex Tobario alongside Kelly Burke. And Kelly, I, I don't think this is this kind of comeback, especially this early in the second half, is what, what we expected. Absolutely not. Down 21 at one point of this game, but you have to give credit to the fight that SIU has shown in their resiliency. Shot the ball terribly in the first half, just 8 at 28, and they've come out like gangbusters in the second half, really attacking the rim, and they've been able to get Marcus Damas going, and Lance Jones has been absolutely phenomenal. In the second half, Saluki's 11 of 18 from the field. Here's a three-pointer from the top of the key, and Darryl Brown buries one and increases the lead up to four. Crowd found themselves back in it as well a couple of times throughout the half, especially when they tied it and then when they gained the lead. Davis gets Childs up in the air. Davis had a drive to get a whistle, a blocking foul underneath. It looks like Brown took a pretty hard hit on that drive in some pain. Took a hit where you don't want to get hit. It's shaken up and it looks like. Got him back on his feet, he's gonna be okay. Number two, Davis Brown, the line that one so foot inside the restricted area and gets pummeled. Looks like his own guy stepped on him as well on the way down. First free throw miss there from Carrington Davis. The transfer from Nebraska. He's granted a waiver to play immediately here at SIU after transferring. He redshirted last year at Nebraska. Gets the free throw there. 61 58. Back to Childs up top. Tavaninen. Brown, back to Child, set on the shot clock. Let's try to dump it inside, but didn't. Now sets the screen for Brown. Active hands again. Throwing it up with two on the shot clock. It's gonna be short. Trying to save it there was Henry. It's out of bounds to the Salukis. And a broken down play, Childs and Round running into each other, just trying to have to salvage things if the shot clock is running out. Brown. 
Down into the mask. Puts it up, puts it in. One point game. The mask so strong, deceivingly strong as a freshman, not afraid to muscle you up to get that position. Underneath, Childs finds some room and lays it in off of the window. And official blows the whistle over near the baseline. And saying something to the mask here. The mask with nine points all in the second half. Along with seven rebounds, he was really taken out of the game in that first half. Could not get anything to fall and really didn't no. have more of those three shot attempts. Yeah, just three shot attempts. Probably did a real nice job of limiting his touches. Going covered inside to Mass. Now in double figures with 11. Back to a one point game. And Damas just does such a nice job in scoring in so many different ways on the post up. That time off the lob. Brown with the fall away. Off the mark, Childs goes over the back to grab the rebound. Top of nine in now to Cannell. Takes it in, off of the window and he scores. Braves increase the lead, back up to three. They're now at four and a half to play. And Damask on his drive in, foul called on the floor. It's gonna be against Henry. And Damask, watch him. Post Brown, so she's the mismatch, posts him up, gets the lob. And then Cannell turning the corner on the freshman, Trent Brown, off glass. Able to contort his body in the air just to find enough room to get one off of the window. Salukis now in the bonus. That seventh foul from Bradley. You watch Marcus Damas play and you just forget that he's a freshman. Going to be an absolutely special player in this league. One point game again. It's been this way for the last few minutes. Underneath, Tabanainen. Nice backdoor cut. Lead back up to three. The mask. Find some room underneath. No. Gets his own rebound. And a jump ball is going to be called as Cannell is able to get his hands on it. And it's a three point lead for the Braves. It'll be that way when we come back. It's a tight one here in Illinois. Well, we thought we were going to get a, a little bit of a muted atmosphere here at the Ventura Center after the lead. Rose to 21 for the Bradley Braves, but the Salukis have mounted a tremendous comeback. They're outscoring the Braves 39-24 in the second half. And the Salukis have even had the lead at one point after being down by as many as 21. They trail it by three with 3.47 to play. And a huge game in the Missouri Valley. It couldn't be two more different halves for SIU, who shot just 28% in the first. looking into Childs again third game back after missing 12 of 13 with a hand injury and they turn it over and a great help defense coming from Barrett Benson Salukis can tie it with a three the exaltation is muted a bit but there's certainly tension in the crowd you can feel it as we get a miss from three from Trent Brown and the rebound of the Braves Every time that SIU has gotten themselves within one to three points, it's the, like the Braves have an answer. Henry trying to go back door. Now here's a pull-up jumper from Brown. Bounces around the rim. Can't get it to drop. Rebound Salukis. This is Jones. 
huge spark for their comeback. Spin move to the lane, can't get it to drop this time. Got to stop in transition. Canal. Now it's down low to Childs. He has it stripped as he went up with it. Taken away is Benson, who's playing with four fouls, comes up with a defensive play. Out to the right side corner and stepping on the sideline is Trent Brown. And that's happened a lot this year in college basketball with the three-point line moving back. Especially that corner three spot. It's so easy. It's such little room to work with in that back foot. You see it there on the line. Usually you've been seeing it with guys who are already set to take that step back. That time he was just trying to gather the ball. And obviously you're, you're thinking more about catching it than your footwork at that point. Turnover nonetheless. Braves with the basketball. Childs launches the triple. Short that time. Save McGill into the hands of Jones. Rejected there by Barr on the drive there from Jones. Koch Barr doing what he does best. The rim protector for this Bradley Brave squad. Five blocks in that first meeting against the Salukis. Fifteen on the shot clock here for the Salukis. Now it's Jones left side. Jones just threaded the needle with that pass to get it to Damask. Benson, dribble handoff now to Damask. Three on the shot clock. Pull up. Short. Eighty seconds to play here in Carbondale. to the rim, off the window, still nothing. Both teams struggling here down the stretch to put the ball in the hoop. Timeout taken here. Southern Illinois down by three. Take a look at today's Geico difference makers for the Salukis of Southern Illinois, it's been Lance Jones with Marcus DeMath not being able to put up a ton in the first half. He's been tremendous. Jones is the reason SIU got themselves back in this ball game following a 21-point deficit. His ability to attack off the dribble. And for Bradley, it'll be Elijah Childs, and Childs again in his third game back. 14.9 is scoring average as he, he's doing just that. He's averaged 19 the last two games since coming back. He hasn't had to do just that, but he's been great for them this afternoon. Look at that efficiency, though. 7 of 14 from the field. Nearly at a double-double and a career-high four assists. He affects the game in so many different facets, not just on the offensive end. And the one thing you won't see on a, on a stat sheet or graphic is energy, and he just amps up that Bradley bench at all times, whether he's on the bench or on the floor. So Southern Illinois calling a timeout. They've got one remaining, both teams with one remaining. What do you want to see the Salukis get here? Well, the Salukis, the natural choice is to go to Marcus Damas, but I'd love to see them go to a two-man game off the dribble. Jones attacking. Here's Jones on the drive. Does attack, off-balance shot. And it's going to go back to the Braves. They're up by three. There is a 11-second or so differential between the shot and the game clock. Canal skips it over to Brown. Brown pulls up from the foul line, buries it. The dagger there from Daryl Brown. Makes it five with 18.1 to go. Brown doing it with a hand in his face. Ten seconds to go. Down by five. They've got to hurry. McGill pulls up from the baseline. It's an air ball. Bradley's got it. A foul committed there by Benson. But that likes, it's likely going to be all she wrote there for Southern Illinois. You could see McGill on that shot attempt trying to draw the contact from Daryl Brown, but 
not called. That was a situation where once you're down five, you got to get to the bucket as quickly as you can or get a shot up in any way you can. They took a little too much time there. Yeah, they absolutely did. Just need to have better shot and clock awareness in a late game situation. And a little surprised at that, just Eric McGill being a, a senior on this SIU squad. Catch bar, misses on the free throw. They'll let one fly at the horn. And it'll go in at the horn from beyond half court. It does count. The Salukis, after being down by as many as 21, they end up falling by only two. But that comeback takes a lot out of you, especially down the stretch. Bradley showing great composure. This is an upperclassman laden squad, and they did just enough in the late stages of this game, some defensive stops late, to pull this one out in a hotly contested NBC matchup. Well, the Missouri Valley Conference now changing a little bit. Southern Illinois had been tied for second place in the conference standings. They now will fall to nine and five. Bradley, with the win, improves to nine and five. So now both those teams a half game behind that second place spot in the Missouri Valley, and that's Loyola Chicago. Still anybody's conference right now. And, and Bradley, they snap Southern's 10-game home court win streak, and they pick up, more importantly, their third away win in league play and puts themselves right into the conversation near the top of the standings now currently in a tie for third place big win for bradley here on the road as you mentioned snapping a 10 game home court win streak and let's not forget the top two teams facing off later tonight and that's going to be one heck of a matchup for kelly burke and our entire cbs crew my name is alex obario this has been a presentation of cbs sports network the 24-hour home of cbs sports we'll send you to our new york studio before getting you out to virginia for vcu and richmond that's it from carbondale see you later